it's fine. I am not redoing this. This took me over a week to do. Not happening. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making a spooky sweater. And this is the yarn. This is the yarn for the project. Now, in the past two vlogs that I've done, I've making more vlogs than normal lately. In both those vlogs, I was talking about the yarn for this project. So this is the project that I have been kind of hinting at over the last two weeks, and I am just really excited to start working on it. And it's so funny because there's a, there's another project that I'm actually currently working on that I had to uh, push aside, even though I really wanted to get it done. It was nowhere near being done. I had just started it, but I'm like, Michelle, October is in like a week and you need to start this project now if you want to wear it at all this month month. But to be fair, I'll probably wear it like all year round. When it's cool enough to wear it all year round, I'll wear it. There was a certain green color that I was looking for. It's this one here. It is impeccable by loops and thread and the color is guacamole. It's very important that I have enough of this yarn. So anyways, today, which is Sunday, September the 25th. So I have four... I have four of this color and then I also bought three of this color here and yes i know they are different brands but the thickness and the weight they're pretty much the same they are both a medium four weight and i do need to use a five millimeter crochet hook which is a us h8 this one is also the same the reason why i went with this is because one it was actually the same price as this like these were the same price even though you get way more in here than you get in here so i bought three instead of four which means i saved five dollars which i mean in the end hopefully that won't bite me in the butt hopefully it'll be okay it's not like the other one the craft smart yarn that i'm always using that one's like just the tiniest bit thicker so i could not go with that yarn also just pointing out that i would have definitely 100 percent would have went with that craft smart value yarn had they had the green but this green i was on a hunt for this green. Here's like the thing. I did actually look at Michael's for this yarn on the website first. They didn't have it. So I went to Lens Mills looking for yarn. They had one that was the same brand as this, but the color was ever so slightly different. Just a little bit more pale, I guess. And I wanted something a bit more vibrant. And luckily the Michael's that I went to right after had this. They only had three and I thought that'd be enough. And then I remember, I remember that rose granny square sweater that I had made months ago. It was the same brand of yarn as this. And I used so many of balls of this. I think I used four to five and that kind of frightened me, even though I'm not going to be using that much yarn. Like it's, there's a plan for this, but I wanted to be prepared to have enough yarn that if I ran out, I had this extra one. And if I don't use this extra one, I love this color green anyway. So I will make something out of it. I, I've learned my lesson. I don't buy yarn just to buy yarn. I usually buy extra yarn when I'm doing a project. And then if I have extra yarn from that project, that's okay. But I, I've learned my lesson. and I don't just buy random yarn anymore. There's a yarn over there that I bought months ago and I haven't used it because I thought it was cute. Anywho, back onto the project. So you might be thinking, what spooky project could you be making with these two colors? Well, I had went to Hot Topic one day and they had this most adorable cardigan. Or was it a sweater? I don't remember. The photo I'll put here and I'll remember if it's a cardigan or a sweater. But anyways, it's like half and half. Half of it was orange, half of it was black, and then it had the pumpkin face in the middle that was reverse colors. And I'm like, I want to make that. But I don't want to go with orange because I have a lot of orange in my wardrobe. Even though like orange is kind of like the color of fall, and it is like in that color scheme that I'm going for this fall, I'm like, you know what? Let's make something with a very vibrant green. Because you don't own anything that's vibrant green, Michelle. Let's do it. So that's what I'm doing. I am crocheting myself a pumpkin sweater. My plan, what it's going to be is it's going to be half of it's going to be black, half of it's going to be a vibrant green, and then the face in the middle is going to be opposite. So when it meets in the center where the side is green, the face is going to be black, and where the side is black, the face is going to be green. And then the back it is also just gonna be half and half but they're gonna be very simple if you watch my one video about me making the hellfire sweater oh boy did i ever struggle with that you know i had to like keep swapping out colors and i had to make a whole grid and everything but what i like about this is that the face is just gonna look something like this it should be easy i really hope it's easy now this video here is not a tutorial video it's just again a crochet vlog that i really like doing i like documenting what i'm crocheting but not necessarily filming every step by step by step. I feel like sometimes it takes away from the project of me having to stop what I'm doing, set up the camera, show what I'm doing, get back to crocheting, stop. Like it's, it's really like stop and go when I make a tutorial. And here's the thing, I do love making tutorials for y'all, but sometimes I just want to make something for myself and not have to do a step-by-step -step video. Now this 
This project is very, very simple, and I'll be showing you like the pattern that I am using. I am gonna start on the back today. I think if I got the back panels done, well, back panel, if I do the back, then I can like kind of size it up and be like, all right, this is where I wanna stop. This is the size, and then I can take all of that and convert it into like math and figure out like how many stitches I want for the face, where I want the face on, but I feel like it's best if I do the back first. Gonna start the back today, see where I get to, and then once the back is done, I'm gonna start on the face to get that done, and then it'll probably be the sleeves and then like the ribbing and then I'll be done. Yeah, so I'm gonna start working on the back and we'll see where that goes. So this is what I got done yesterday. I think I started about here and I got all of this done and I'm loving how this is turning out right now. All right, so if you watched a vlog that I did a few weeks ago, you probably recognize what I'm wearing and what I look like because I think I might've gotten my hair cut by now. I don't know, I might have, I might not have, but I do wanna discuss how far I've gotten on this project. I think this is probably four days worth of work. I'm really loving it. I am really liking how this is turning out. I really like how the stitches, like look at the stitches, they're so nice. All I'm doing is I'm going from one side with one color coming down here, then I am swapping the color, going with the new color down, work my way back, etc. Keep like thinking, oh no, am I making it too big? Is it too big? But also part of me is like, I'd rather have it oversized than undersized. Impeccable yarn by Loops and Thread that they sell at Michael's. Oh, it's so nice. It's such a nice yarn to work with. I have been using the Craft Smart yarn and nothing against, nothing against the Craft Smart yarn, but it is a little rougher. Whereas this is just so slightly softer and I actually do like how much lighter weight it is. Like it's not even that much light of weight even though like on the yarn itself it is a medium for weight and the impeccable is a medium for weight this is just is so much nicer and then even this Bernat yarn it's so soft and it's just it's so nice and although like I don't have like seven dollars every single time I need to buy yarn like this was seven dollars it's ridiculous for the quality I think it's worth it in the long run like if I'm doing like something really basic and it's like a cardigan or something chunky then maybe you know I'll go for the cheaper yarn yesterday this is I started so I put a little hair clip in there because I had one stitch marker but I lost it and the only reason I'm putting this here is I like to see the progress I like to see how far I did I put this in my mouth and then I'm gonna do it <laughs> took me about an hour and a half that's not bad and the only reason I stopped last night is because my arm started hurting so I had to stop I'm really hoping that I can finish the back today and I love it how every single video I'm like I just want to finish this part today and then it never gets done I'm confident I can finish the back today if I don't finish today I will be very close to finishing it today I probably can start working on the face tomorrow at least planning out the face tomorrow I'm just gonna try to finish this up today this is where I am. So what I did is I just got some paper. I am putting some tape behind it and I'm just gonna stick it to here and then I'm just gonna hold it up to myself and see where the positioning that I like it. I think I am gonna go with the nose. Without the nose, I mean like, you probably still think it's a pumpkin, but I think with the nose is just better. I'm debating between the spiky teeth and then this, the regular mouth. Cause here's the thing, with the regular mouth, what would happen is that say like the tooth here, the tooth here and here would be the color that it would be in. So like this tooth would be black and then this would be all green and then this tooth would be green and then this would be all black and then this would be half and half. That one, this one I don't mind. Like I can kind of see the vision, but it's the simpler version. And this one, I like this one so much better. It's just crocheting these zigzags. I don't know how that would work. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want the position of them and then I'm going to play with it. So I'm gonna do a little version of this and then I'm gonna do like a little version of that and see which one I like better. So I tried using an online website in order to create the creation that I wanted to make. And um, it was going okay until I got to the point where it wanted me to subscribe in order to use certain tools and I wasn't going to do that. Like sure it would make my life a lot easier with me not having to like make my own grid and everything but I was not going to do that. So I just went back to the old fashioned way of me just graphing everything out on Procreate. Also what's so funny is that they don't actually show you the grid. Like I have a grid here, I'm not making these lines straight myself. So what I ended up doing is I think it was 90 across and I was gonna draw them out. But then what I ended up doing was I got a photo, like I drew the photo that I wanted and then I pixelated it online, like on a website. And then I took that pixelated image and then I put it 
in here and honestly that made things so much easier to do and then i ended up going with the spiky mouth just because i liked it a little bit better i wanted it to look a little bit more scary and less friendly you know but yeah so this wasn't this didn't take too long to do so i've been starting the face part um, i was kind of like getting into the zone that i didn't realize i had to do those two little parts run here and run here which means i have to take thankfully i caught it but i have to take away all this row here do it again so it's been a few days since i've last updated you on the sweater but i got the back piece done the back piece is now finished but what i realized don't let this facade fool you i am a fool i had written in my nice book saying that that one sweater i had did was 80 chains across and i'm like oh i want to make it a little bit bigger i'm gonna make this 90 chains across turns out i'm a no good liar and i actually did 70 chains across not 80 even though i wrote 80 in the book i think originally i wanted 80 and then i never crossed it out and wrote 70. so i technically only had to do 80 chains across and i did 90. it's pretty oversized it's fine i am not redoing this this took me over a week to do not happening it's good to go it would have been nice if i would have known this ahead of time and when i figured that out i was like this far in and i'm like there's no turning back now this thing is gonna be massive it's a cozy sweater i'm gonna wear for fall i've learned my lesson on to what i've been working on i've gotten the mouth done almost at the point where i have to start adding the nose in and then i have to do the eyes being honest this is actually quite easy compared to the last sweater that i did like this the hellfire sweater i'm just switching between two colors and it's it's amazing uh, there was a few times where i kind of forgot to do that and then i had to take it apart and then at one point i don't know how it happened i don't know how it happened this ended up being longer than this like the black part they were supposed to be even and at some point this got to 20 and this got to 19 and i'm like i'm not taking it apart and figuring out where i went wrong i'm just gonna roll with it it's fine okay it's more of a rectangle than a square because at the bottom i am going to be doing a chunky ribbing at the bottom so that's also going to build the height of these panels so today i'm just going to continue working on this and then once that's done i can just start working on the sleeves the sleeves are going to be the easiest part because one is just going to be green and one is just going to be black also what's really funny is that when i'm working on an intricate project like this i i just like i whiz right through it i want to see it come out i want to see how this face is going to look i want to see my vision come to life whereas when i'm working on a plain project like this and like it looks the same all the way through but working on the mouth part this was one night of me doing it because i was just in the mood and i i just went for it that's what i'm gonna be working on today yesterday i got done this much so that means this all the way down i got done and i even got to start the nose i'll probably get to the eye part today so if you look at right here this is everything that i've done and this is everything i have to do so technically i'm halfway down the front which is super exciting because then that means that i get to work on the sleeves next <sighs> okay so here's the problem that i'm i'm coming into right now is okay so if you see this nose this side is so nice and clean and then this side it's just not and it's because like you know you go one way and then when you reverse it it makes a nice line here but then here it just it just does this and i'm not too sure how to not have these little things it's all over the mouth too so it's not a huge deal but where i'm kind of coming into the problem is i thought oh like how i made that vest the one time where you kind of like I don't skip one but you don't really skip it to try to get this cleaner line and i was like working i'm like wow i'm doing great i'm getting this clean line then i'm realizing that the eyes are looking a little weird the eyes are looking a little a little short i'm already up to like four stitches up here but if i look over here on my grid i should have one two three four five six. i should have seven i should have seven stitches right now and i don't have that and that's because i was trying to do a different method to not get these little lines but it's just not working i wasted an hour and a half of my time not to mention i wasted an hour and a half watching a gosh darn morph morbius morpheus i don't even know it's a bad movie anyways i'm gonna have to undo this and like looking at it sure sure it could work but then i'm gonna have like this much of just open space so when I mean open space, all of this is going to be open space. I am going to take this apart just up to the eye. And you know what? This little nose thing with these little things, there's probably a better way to do it cleaner like this. I'm just going to have to take it apart and figure out a better way to do it. Here it is. I took it all off. I'm back to where I started today. This is where I started today. 
Uh, I gotta deal with all this now. Yeah, I gotta roll with all that back up now. Okay, so it has been some time since I've updated you on the sweater. First off, I got the back done. Not only is the back done, I also have the front done, which I think turned out really good, like really good. And I know, yes, okay, like there's these little stitches here, there's these little stitches here, there's some on the nose. It is what it is, it's fine. I tried a different way to do it and it just didn't work out and I had to take all of it apart. One arm is done. Now it might not look like, Michelle, this, this arm looks pretty short. Well, the sweater itself comes out like a quarter, three quarters of my arm length. And then like this, I'm thinking that I might've made the arms too long. I might've made the arms too long. Fantastic. But what's great is it's not like I made the arms too wide. If I made the arms too wide, that would be an issue. But if they're too long, all I have to do is just undo the work that I did, even though it took me so much time and I could have been further along in the project. If I would have known, I wouldn't have had to make the arms so gosh darn long. And then here's the thing, you might be like, they, they do line up, but I want like a really chunky cuff. What I think I'm going to do is I am going to continue working on this arm here. And then I do have to attach these together. Together. Now I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna do the pin process and that is when I take safety pins and I pin everything together just as a mock-up so I can see how it fits on me and then once I know how it fits on me then I can determine whether or not I made the sleeves too long because nothing's worse than being like oh they're too long I'm gonna make them shorter and then be like wait Michelle you made them too short now and you're gonna have to recrochet what you already already did again. I would like to get the second sleeve done today if I can get it done today and then tomorrow I can attach it all together and then start working on the ribbing. Now, here's the thing. This video, I really wanted it to come out on Sunday. It's not gonna happen because this sleeve took me three days to do. I'm not exaggerating, three days to do this. This should have taken me a day. The other day, my dad was rearranging the entire living room, so I had to help him with that. I got nothing done on my arm because by the time I started crocheting, I'm like, I am so tired. I don't wanna do this. In my head, I had planned how everything was gonna go. I was gonna finish this on Sunday, finish this on Monday, attach it and start the ribbing on Wednesday, and finish everything up Thursday. Today is Friday. If that gives you any indication of how far behind I am on this project, I am a quarter of the way done this sleeve on Friday. Also, um, the back of this ain't, ain't the prettiest. Now I know there's, uh, I think it's called tapestry or whatever, the way you can weave the ends in. I didn't want to do that. I would rather have this chaos in the back than have to uh, weave in these, uh, these, these long strands just because when it comes to the front, I did test it a little bit. The green, like the, say like this, these lines were coming through, through the black. If you look behind this side, there's all these green strands. If I were to have crocheted them in to my work, there wouldn't be the mess on the back, but then the green would be poking out of this black here. And I just didn't like the look of it. Maybe it's because my stitches aren't tight enough. Maybe if they were tight enough, it, it would work better. Just didn't work for what I wanted. And I am fine with it looking like this. It's never gonna go through the washing machine. I always do get questions about how do I wash these things. I haven't really had to wash them because I don't wear them a lot. I wear them very rarely, and it's not that I don't want to wear them, it's just I have other clothes, I have other outfits to wear. So when I do wash them, I gently hand wash them, and then you like, you know when you roll it up in a towel, you roll it up in a towel, you kind of squish that extra water out, and then you lay it flat to dry, that way it doesn't like stretch and pull and do whatever it needs to do. I'm gonna probably hand wash this. And that's another reason why I don't sell my stuff is because I am fine with this. But someone who might buy this might not be fine with this and might complain. So that's why I don't make it for anybody. I make it for myself. That's done. Gonna pin it together and try it on. Okay, so that's this side. That's this side. I tried to, I ran out of uh, safety pins, so. It's a little bit too long. And I don't think it's a little bit too long by a lot. I think it's just a little bit too long by maybe a row or two. Like I think this is gonna be a good fit. I wanted the baggier fit here. And then of course at the bottom, I am gonna be putting more, like a really big ribbing on the bottom. I think that this is a little bit too long. I mean, it'd be fine if I wasn't gonna put a cuff on it, but because I do want a cuff on it, I think it is a little bit long. I think I need to bring it to there. Yeah, so like I'm gonna take this much off of it. Again, the last time I was making a sweater, I was using a thick Thicker yarn by just a little bit so it's throwing my math off on this one here so like every sweater is always a little bit different and that's why I have to take notes well I did it I got 
all the pieces done. It took me a lot longer than it should have, but it's done. This one here, last night I started here and I got all that done. Look how much I got that done in one night. And then this took me three nights. It's the same size. Anywho, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to connect them together and then I'm gonna start the ribbing on the bottom because that takes the longest and then I can do the ribbing on the sleeves and then I can do the collar and then I can tie in all those loose ends and then I'll be done this. I love this so much. This turned out exactly how I wanted it to turn out. And it's just a little frustrating that I can't wear it right now. How I'm gonna connect it. This is the back piece inside and that's gonna be the outside. And then this is gonna be the bottom cause this is where I started. The front piece is a little bit smaller than the back piece. And that's because when I switch colors, sometimes I like tighten my stitch a little bit and then that kind of like shrinks it in this way. Figure out where that next spot is gonna be, but then I'm gonna stitch here, I'm gonna stitch here. The sleeve is gonna go like this on that side and it's gonna do the same on that side. And then when the sleeve is done, I'm gonna add the cuff here. Now the cuff is actually gonna be the opposite color. So I'm gonna do a black cuff on the green side and then I'm gonna do a green cuff on the black side. And on the bottom, I've kind of been debating and I'm still not 100% sure if I should do just a solid black ribbing or if I should again do reverse where I do black ribbing on the green side and green ribbing on the black side. Once everything's attached then I can kind of like see where I am and figure that out. I almost had a panic attack. I'm like why is this stitching different than that stitching? Michelle this is single. This is half double. You know this. You knew this going into it. Stitching it up and then I will get back to y'all when it's all sewn together. Cause what eventually happens is I sew that together. Then I sew this and then I sew this. So it will all be one piece. Once it's all one piece, I'll get back to y'all, show you how the fit is. And then I can start working on the ribbing. This is what it's looking like right now. My hair is like a, a mess. Anyways, so I have the sleeves attached. And if you look at them, yes, they do look a little short, but again, the cuff, I really want a dramatic cuff on here. It's looking pretty good. Also, when I was kind of like debating whether or not I wanted to do the opposite colors on the ribbing, I decided, yes, yes, I'm gonna do it. It's not gonna take any more time. It's gonna take me like what, like a minute, not even just to switch out the colors. It will be fine because I think like the black on the green would look great, but then I feel when this goes down, when you're looking at it, this one, this side is gonna seem longer than this side if it's all black across. So I am gonna do black ribbing on the green side and green ribbing on the black side. Same for up the collar. And then again, of course, the the cuffs, they're also gonna be opposite. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. I'm gonna work on the bottom ribbing first cause that's gonna take the most time. But yeah, so this is what it's looking like so far. It's so cute, I love it. I'm really excited to wear it. Well, I mean, there's only like what, like two more months, two more months, two more weeks of um, October till November. And I do have another project that's, that's currently um, in that bag right there. This is the project I was working on in uh, September, but I had to give it up so I could start working on this so I could have this done by Halloween, which is looking like it's gonna happen as long as nothing else goes horribly wrong. So I started doing the ribbing, but I was doing like four skip stitches in between each rib and it was like, it was coming out a little bit short and I was already done like a quarter of it and that would have been way too small. So I did have to take that apart and redo the bottom ribbing. So I finished the ribbing on the bottom and now I just have to work on the sleeves, which I am going to get done today. This took me a good part of the afternoon to get this done. Hopefully the sleeves won't take me as long because they're smaller. So we'll see. And then once that's done, I'm hoping to get this neck done because I want to wear this tomorrow. I would like to wear this tomorrow. So I would like to get it done today. It's done. It's it's done. It took me a lot longer to do than I thought, mainly because of this sleeve right here. For some reason, it took me three days to do this sleeve. This sleeve took me like a day and a little bit. And when I mean like a day, I mean like, I only crochet for like three hours a day because then it's too much. I think it turned out so cute. It's exactly what I thought. There is a few little, a few little things that I would like to change is one, the ribbing on the bottom. I don't know. It's not as tight as I would have liked it, but I was doing four skips like in between each rib and it was too tight so that I undid it, but now it's too loose. I'm not going to do anything about it right now. If it drives me nuts, I might just take it apart and do like three skips and then a rib and then four skips and then a rib and then back to three, you know? I have to say I do like how I mix matched the collar and the bottom. I also really do like how I did the cuffs differently. And then this is how it looks on the back side. I think it looks pretty good. I think I need to get better at making my collars. But other than that, I give this 
probably a 10 out of 10, maybe a nine out of 10, just because of this uh, black sleeve here. Threw me back three days. I should have had this done by now. You know how I was saying how these right here, like the like the triangle part here, how they kind of stick out? Well, when you're far enough away, you're not really looking at the stitches, you're looking at the whole, looking at it as a whole. And what's so funny is I'm like, where have I seen this face before? this beret that I also thought of Hot Topic. So this is the green that I was going for and this is the closest green that I could get. Also this green is a lot more vibrant in person. Well compared to this green, it's not looking very vibrant, but it is. I'm really bad with berets. I never know how to wear them. Like I love them, but I never know how to wear them. See, uh, there. I can match, but it is cute. I think it looks cute with my short hair. That's it. It's done. It's done. I can now work on the other fall one that I had started in August. Hopefully next year I'll be more prepared and start working on it in September instead of like October. Also, for anyone wondering, I have this yarn left, which is a fantastic. I have a whole ball of green and I have this black yarn. This will be great for future projects. This... I don't know, maybe I'll make something that like matches this, like a hat or something in the future, but I have this. This is left over from making this whole thing. I bought four of these, I used three of them, and then this is what's left over from the three. I think I have like a quarter of a ball left over from this black, because there's much more black in this. I'm also going to be writing down everything I did for this project, because the last few projects I didn't, and then it tricked me because I had wrote down false information. If you are new to my channel, you like sewing, crafting, and thrifting, and of course crocheting. Why not hit that subscribe button? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok, which is both Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.